All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where it is a February day. It is 81 degrees and climbing, supposed to hit, I think, 87 today here on Thursday, February 17th or 18th, 2022. And uh, so uh, I am uh, in the middle of starting to rip down these buildings at Crazy Crane. And I am off to Lowe's again. And uh, Got to go by the library and return return one of the, I would say, one of the top five novels I have ever read in my life, uh, and certainly the most important book of 2021, and that is The Every by Dave Eggers. I have already had, good lord, two or three videos about the uh, the every by Dave Eggers and uh, if you read one book in the year 2022 you need to make it that one I, I, I mean the it, it there, there's so many layers of this book uh, that I'm probably I'm gonna have to read it again I'm gonna digest it I'm gonna go read the first novel which is called the circle it's it's a two-part thing this was I didn't realize when I got the every that it was uh, that it was a two-part but anyway you might want to start with the circle although the every stands uh, stands on its own just fine so anyway going to stop by the library so I just I just want to have one more rant before I, not a, it's not really a rant, it's just a, uh, I guess it's just a continuing book review on this book, and if you haven't heard my, uh, if you haven't heard my first two uh, rants, it just real quickly, it's that uh, the shtick of the book is that this doomer chick, this kind of uh, who describes herself as an anti-tech troglodyte. She joins this, uh, th this corporation, this monopoly corporation called the Every, which in effect is kind of Google on steroids. It, it doesn't say, it, it, you're figuring probably about 30 years in the future. I'm guessing this book took place in about 2050, although he never, uh, he never really says. You figure out for your own how long it is going to take Google and uh, Amazon and Facebook and, and all of the usual alphabet suspects. He, he just extrapolates if, if things keep going uh, as they are, what this world is going to look like in, in, in a few years, uh, you know, from the surveillance state end of things and and the police state and uh, and, and and just how as AI and all of this stuff takes over every single aspect of our lives. Uh, and you know what it's what it's going to mean and this is uh, I, I think this book is right up there with 1984 and Brave New World uh, I, I think the guy is calling it exactly right and, and what's great about this book at the same time it is both hilarious it is one of the funniest books you, you will ever read and the most terrifying book uh, you will you will ever read you're reading this stuff and it, and it almost sounds like a future satire uh, but if if someone had written 
you know, if 30 years ago Dave Eggers had written a book, what uh, AI and the surveillance state and Google and Facebook and YouTube and all of the rest of it was going to look like uh, in 2022, if someone, Dave, Dave Eggers in 1992 had written a, a book about 2022, it would have been, nobody would have believed it. It would have been both hilarious and terrifying and, uh, and just extrapolating the last 30 years over the next 30 years at the rate this is going. Uh, you better laugh while you can because it's uh, it, 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 it's a terrifying look in, in, into the, you know global industrial society uh, over the next 30 years when the, the you know when us old folks when us troglodyte uh, luddite old farts who weren't raised with this, this stuff you know these these goddamn uh, smartphones and all of this stuff from cradle to grave and everybody on the planet was born with a uh, with a smartphone in their hand uh, and come and become 100 percent dependent uh, on, on, on all of these various gadgets and, and, and whatnot uh, what it's going to look like what these new generations are, are uh, you know, coming up to, to take over the planet, as it were, who have never known anything else. And, you know, the, uh, the, there, there's so many levels. Now, one of the levels, which, which I'm not really going to talk about in this rant, but, uh, you, you know, where... Uh, someone from my perspective and probably from the perspective of a lot of folks uh, listening to Collapse Chronicles, uh, they are horrified by what is being talked about and they just can't believe that it's going to be allowed to happen. but. What you know, one of the main themes of the book is not just the technology itself, this intrusive surveillance, police state, uh, AI technology, you know, ruling our lot, ruling literally every second, every second of our lives, e even when you're asleep, where this is going. Uh, it, it, every bit is terrifying uh, as the uh, as the technology itself that is unfolding is the fact that the vast vast majority of people are going to cheer it on how how just uh, how just absolutely supportive uh, all of these people are going to be just handing over their lives, uh, their freedoms, their civil rights, all of this over to, uh, uh, over to these, quote, benevolent overlords looking out uh, for their safety and whatnot. I'm not going to get in on this channel with what's going on up there in Canada. Uh, but, but but what's going on on there up there in Canada? You, you know, with Justin Trudeau, a democratically elected, uh, uh, whatever that guy is, supposedly democratically elected, uh, essentially from some of our perspectives, declaring martial law. Uh, in, in Canada and, and, and how just just unquestioningly that how many people are, are willing just to go along with uh, with, with this stuff uh, and, and so there, there, there's that part of it and there then there's the part about there's the level about, you know, anyone who sees the handwriting on the wall 
first they have to uh, first they have to wrap their heads around the fact that uh, you know 90 percent uh, of the population on this planet uh, is cheering this on. Uh, on, but not just 90%, that more and more of their own friends, that, that any one of us who are horrified by what is unfolding with all of this and trying to ring the, the alarm bells about it as more and more of our own personal friends, family members are joining you know what I'm saying, are, 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 are joining the, the, the 90%, uh, and it's just going to get lonelier and lonelier that uh, anybody uh, seeing what is going on on here and, and just uh, with their jaw dropping uh, about the technology and the, and the uh, support for it. Uh, it's just going to have to get used to the idea that more and more uh, of, of our friendships, our, our familial relationships, whatever, uh, are going to be tested. They're going to be tested very strongly by this. But even that's. But anyway, what I, what I'm, uh, from from the perspective of Collapse Chronicles, what what I'm, want to talk about. I guess it was my interview with Terry Spar. Uh, if you want to look that up, uh, we, we were uh, talking about this and, 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 and probably the, the scariest level of all, the scariest level of all in this from an, from an environmentalist doomer perspective, what sounds like irony. Uh, at this point, it sounds like hilarious satire, but 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 the the bottom line here, and this is what uh, the 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 main character when she loses her best friend, the the way she loses her best friend, is that her best friend is convinced that. This uh, this artificial intelligence and all of this stuff is good for the planet. That the you know the the bottom line uh, is the benevolent overlords they're talking about following their program. Uh, it will, the, the, the bottom line effect is that the planet will be a better place for it. And uh, they actually, Dave Eggers, well not enough, but he actually, more than any other popular author, you know, he actually talks about overpopulation. He doesn't talk nearly enough, but at least he mentions the fact that uh, breeding is 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 going to you know go out of favor uh, as people understand that uh, breeding uh, is the uh, the worst thing for the planet. So, but he really what they talk about a lot is how the whole travel industry, for instance, that. The, 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 you know, gutting the travel industry, just the, the freedom, your, your right, your basic God-given human right to, uh, you know, to get in your gas-sucking truck, to, uh, to get on a cruise ship, uh, to get on a plane and fly all around the world. That uh, that we're going that this is unsustainable. I, I mean, this is this is obvious that all of this stuff that where that is coming clear about having infinite growth on a finite planet that we have got to rein this in. And what you need to understand, and, and you know, and, and of course, what I do understand, and I, I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody. My lifestyle, that this running to Lowe's to buy this planet-eating crap, 
uh, it, it, it's got to go out the window if there's any chance uh, of saving this planet. Uh, so what Dave Eggers does is, uh, you know, he absolutely lampoons and skewers, uh, you know, the usual list of suspects, uh, people who use fossil fuels for wastefully for whatever reason that we have just got to stop using fossil fuels, every one of us that, uh, you, you know, these personal and lifestyle choices where you're going to be absolutely shamed with your personal carbon impact, your impact anxiety, your personal carbon impact, which is going to be, you know, broadcast for the whole world to see. Everyone's going to know uh, about your PCI uh, and, and, and you'll be shamed and all of this stuff. Um, but, but the bottom line, uh, which the, the inconvenient truth is that, uh, that to the extent that it, if you trust uh, Google and your benevolent overlords to actually have the planet's best interest at stake. Now, now uh, uh, of course, what uh, you know, what he, what he obviously he's saying is that it that making money is their number. Obviously, is going to be this monopolistic corporation's number one goal. It, it, you know, is to make a bunch of money. But uh, if if they if the way they make money is by basically putting everybody else out of business except themselves and and doing everything uh, you know working from home uh, that that you know commuting to work we're already seeing a lot of more favor of working from home but all of this crap that you're seeing in front of you th this has got to stop and so to the degree that the artificial intelligence and all of this technology uh, you know it is going to save the planet uh, you have to admit that it's a good thing uh, it, it, any alternative model but what it means is that humans are going to have to make the sacrifices they're gonna have to uh, get out of the gas sucking car uh, obviously talking about cruise ships uh, are, have to be the first thing to go flying around the world uh, you, you know uh, these to hopping on an easy jet as as Andy the gardener is always talking about uh, you're going to have to live like uh, a lot more like Andy Gardner, Andy the Gardener, and and a, and a lot less like Sam Mitchell. Uh, you know, here's the Walmart 18-wheeler. Uh, I mean, look at this traffic. This is one, uh, basically, a small town in Florida. This this is this is completely unsustainable. Uh, and so that, that, that of course the question is uh, are people going to make these personal uh, life you know consumer and lifestyle choice uh, changes uh, to lower their personal uh, carbon impact and, and of course my uh, my view is there's no way they're going to uh, I mean this is why the essential ironic flaw in the in the novel the you know the basic flaw uh, in the novel is n not that people are, are gonna so much cheer on 
uh, this, uh, but but it, it, it's it's easier to believe, especially what's gone on on this planet in the past couple of years. It is easier to believe that people are going to hand over their most you know their most basic personal freedoms and uh, and civil rights and cheer on the uh, the you know the dictators and the tyrants uh, than they are going to to willingly uh, make the the sacrifices uh, to lower their personal carbon endpoint. But anyway, I am being recorded. All right, I am being recorded by Bank of America. I have to stop here at the Bank of America AI machine so I can get some cash. They actually still of course, being a cashless society is in the cards. That goes without saying. But I'm going to exercise the freedom to get some cash to go increase my own personal carbon impact at Lowe's. Get out there and get some cash while you still can. Bye, guys.